Mm. I, I keep hearing that China is a paper tiger. Have you, you've been studying this a lot. Have you found stuff like this? And what I mean by that is that they're putting on a big show of force, but that they're actually very weak and, and, and vulnerable right now as a government. So, I mean, you know, it'd be cliche to say act weak when you're strong and act strong when you're weak. And, and their strategy was hide your strength, bide your time. That was really sort of the overarching vision of Deng Xiaoping and then sort of build up. And then you can start acting very assertively and aggressively. I think that I don't think that they're 50 feet tall. Uh, and they might think that we're 50 feet tall, which should mean that we really have to up our game because they're a lot more serious than we are. I mean, when we have our generals talking about, you know, General Milley talking about, I really want to understand white rage. What kind of message? <laughs> Antif does, he means Antifa. Yeah, he means, of course. Yeah, natural, right, yeah. <laughs> well, what kind of message does that send to a people that has no qualms about killing its own citizens, crushing Hong Kongers, threatening Taiwan, threatening Chinese nationals abroad in every single country, uh, they don't. I don't. I don't think they perceive us to be serious. So that's dangerous potentially that they have that perception that we're not serious. But I think also it's re it's reality in a lot of respects. Now, are they a paper tiger? Like if you're looking at how many you know nuclear warheads do they have, and you go through all those conventional weapons, I don't think that ultimately the conflict. I think we're in the conflict with China. That that'd be the first thing I'd say. They've been in at war in one way or another with us for decades would be my Probably argument. Probably since the late 1800s, since the Opium Wars. Well, you could go back, and they and, so that, and that would be a grievance. You know, they have kind of their historical narrative of the West putting them down, and constantly now they're going to rise up, and we're going to be, you know, return to our being the center of the world, the Middle Kingdom. You know, are, are their economic numbers real? I would put zero stock in. You know, we grew at 35% last year. Yeah, you know, I, I wouldn't put any stock in that whatsoever. But where they clearly have significant power is in the realm of, influence over everyone else. The fact that you can bring an American to his knees to kowtow over Taiwan, I think tells you all you need to know. Do they do that when it comes to America? Do they do the reverse? And also they understand how foolish we've been. I mean, the business community just put out a letter recently. I wrote about this at Newsweek talk, saying to the Biden administration, you really need to go back to the table on more negotiating with China because we need to increase trade and economic engagement with China. And it starts and, and you gotta remove those tariffs as soon as possible also. We understand, you know, there are all sorts of issues with China's predatory economic practices, but we really need to get back to the table and it and by the way, it's America first too. It's good for the American workers. <laughs> There's gonna be an anti inflationary policy. You'll watch, you'll see. On what basis whatsoever would any serious people say, you know what, I've seen the way China's acted just over the last 18 months, let's definitely go and engage more with them. When that you know, has been the entire strategy, it's been a bear hug strategy. It's let's invite the West in, they'll give us capital, we'll steal their technology, mm -hmm. they'll get nothing out of us ultimately, we'll have all of the major industries dominated, monopolized, so that during a, something like a pandemic, for example, we can threaten to withhold essential medicines from you. So the, the, or control five G infrastructure. The, the funny, the funny thing about this is, mm -hmm. we have the the, the uh, Xinjiang province, the Uyghur Muslims, and that I can't even make a joke about them considering it when it comes to these 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 trade deals. Like I'd like to make a joke where there's like some corporate executives being like, "Gentlemen, we've just got this report that they're torturing, they're forced, there's forced abortions." These people are being, you know, it is an ethnic cleansing. This is horrible. We have to consider our business practices with this country. I can't even make that joke because when they're sitting in the office, some guy goes, oh, did you hear they got a concentration camp? Huh. Does it affect our bottom line? Not at all. Huh. Praise the Lord. It's like, all right, great. What's our numbers this time around? Oh, anyway, moving on. They don't care at all about that stuff. Collateral damage. So, so you, you have to understand it's outside of the fact that they're ripping us off, stealing our IP. They're threatening us in terms of the South, the, the South China Sea. They're threatening Taiwan, one of our one of our allies, and our chips, computer chips that we need. And they're also just morally repugnant within their own country. That's what I'm wondering. And we're just like America's just like yeah, but you know, it, it's the money cow and power. Right? You brought up the word kowtow a few times. It basically means well, I'm looking at the definition here: act excessively subservient manner. But it comes from a Chinese idea that you would go to the emperor, bow on your knees, put your forehead on the ground, and beg submission from the emperor and the emperor John and, Santa. And forward foreign leaders <laughs> would go you. to China and they would bow and put to the emperor and like. And then you'd have the blessing of China and they would send you money and they would send you troops and they would send you architects and things to come work with you. And is it still like that? Is there still a Chinese emperor? I don't even know right now. Is it a 
Xi Jinping. Well, Xi Jinping is <laughs> is the emperor. So, so they dispelled with the empire. Now it's just a communist party. But he's still acting as if the child. He's the child of heaven. Is this? It's a it, it's it's a communist party, but with Confucian characteristics. He's. I mean, look. I don't think that Xi Jinping is like this great philosopher, king, dictator. <laughs> but but he's sort of blended propagandistically the traditional Chinese cultural ethoses with communism and so he is the next thing to Mao I mean he's number two after Mao essentially there now of course yeah, like Michael Bloomberg talking about like well he has domestic constituencies too even though it's not a democracy I mean <laughs> he, he has he has other members of the communist party who would probably like to have his seat but like I said he also engaged in a purge soon after he entered what you call an anti-corruption purge which is basically taking out two to three million members of the party wow. uh, probably who he felt you know were a threat to him I mean jailing not always m- murdering them but you know, that's just another day. It's the Goblin King, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got to kill the king to be the king. Yeah, who's the, what's the real power of China? They put Mao, or they put a, what's his name, Xi Jinping in the front. But I imagine it's like an oligarchical dark state, like a quiet people behind the scenes that no one knows who they are that are running things. He, everyone is answerable to him, obviously. Like, you know, first of all, it's also worth noting their military, the PLA, is the Chinese Communist Party's military. It's not China's military. It's a distinction worth making. It's the party's military arm. And she has taken substantial control over that military in his time running the country. Look, it's very clear that the private companies, there's been a massive regula- regulatory crackdown. I mean, you got to put all these things in air quotes there, but massive regulatory crackdown. Jack Ma, you know, was essentially disappeared for months and then reemerged. They scuttled the IPO that his company was going to go through. His value went from $900 billion to $450 billion, at least, and it's probably still dropping. They're just selling off parts of his companies to party members and who else? I don't know. In July of 2021, U.S. listed Chinese companies lost $400 billion in market value under this regulatory crackdown. You talk about oligarchical powers. I mean, the people running these companies who are all party members, obviously, if those are your oligarchs, they're being cut down to size in real time. So like, there are vulnerabilities. I mean, there are vulnerabilities which we'll never know. And do I trust our intelligence to see them? I don't know. But that said, yeah, look, in a system like that with a one man dictator, he obviously has to answer to other people because they're all at his throat all the time. Right. Not his not his citizen, right. not the citizenry. Obviously. And like who owns the, the party owns the land. So yeah. who owns the party? The Goblin King, whoever is. That's what they say. That's what they make us think. But I don't think so. I think Mao is too dangerous. So they, they make sure that it's like a, a puppet now. I, I am not convinced even our intelligence agencies are uh, genuinely con- concerned with preserving and protecting this nation. I think when you look at Afghanistan and, 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 the, and the Afghan papers, what you really have is a disaster where everyone's just like, I don't want to get in trouble. How much can I extract from the system before it all falls on my head? I think that of like every institution I'm looking at. And, and unfortunately, it's, it's almost like with Trump, there was this kind of sporadic, bombastic attempt at some kind of cobbling together a, a return to, I guess, na- some kind of nationalism. Like, we're going to have borders. We're going to have, uh, we're going to put more controls on immigration. We're going to have the industries come back. We're going to try and help the American people get jobs and better their lives. And that was a threat to those who are trying to extract the last little bit from the system. So they all collectively scream. It's, a, it's, it's um, what's the right word for it? Basically, the confidence in this country has been lost for a long time to the point where even our elites have no confidence in it mm-hmm. and they're selling out to China among other uh, among other sellouts you saw it perfectly personified in the conversation between the secretary of state blinken and the national security advisor and their meeting with their chinese counterparts in anchorage and by the way what did china do to deserve to have that high level meeting i mean in the first place if you're really serious about them and you ascribe primary culpability in the coronavirus pandemic at the very least spreading worldwide well of course they protected themselves why would you ever meet with them over anything i mean they should be viewed as they're the most culpable country in this and trump said you know 10 trillion dollars that's probably an underestimation of what they should pay in terms of recompense but that meeting the chinese communist party dignitaries basically said oh you're going to attack us over human rights well look at you you're a systemically racist country and your history is awful etc and and blinken and and, and uh, sullivan the national security advisor sort of like well we accept your premise but 
you have no moral comp. You have no confidence. You have no vision. Basically, you're saying, yeah, we agree. Our, our adversary's propaganda that the left has put out about America for decades is true. They've drank the Kool-Aid. Right. So who's going to defend the country if you say that at core it is a rotten, deplorable, yep. irredeemable country? Mm-hmm. When when you have a substantial amount of people in this country saying that, it's a self it is a self-fulfilling prophecy. And when you have this critical race applied principles now manifesting in our schools, manifesting in our media, the rot has got to the foundation. And how long can the building stand? Racial Marxism, that, that, which is, you know, it's really just a rhetorical game, critical race theory in a lot of ways. It's, it's like putting a, a just and virtuous veneer on your regressive ideology of saying, well, we're fighting for the good people and you're the bad people, et cetera. But I, I totally agree. It's the rot and the corruption is incredibly deep. On the other hand, maybe more people are awake to the fact that this is a game that's being played than ever before. It's never been exposed, I think, in such crystal clear fashion how corrupted all the institutions are. The the blindfold has been removed, I think, for a lot of people. But the question is how many people and how far gone are we? I am... I'm optimistic and pessimistic in, in a certain way. I think that when it comes to the rise of China... You're familiar with Thucydides' trap. We we've, we've, we we discuss it quite a bit on the show. Like so, I, I think there's this real fear among elites that a war is inevitable, and so if they hobble America, it will prevent that war from <laughs> happening. So it's take the the crowbar to the knee poof, to America, and then we avoid the war because America can't stand up against China. So I'm I'm pessimistic in that sense. I'm optimistic in the sense that I think I'm starting to feel more and more like what power cancel culture and all these things had has been weakened to a certain degree. Seeing these parents start rising up, one parent actually punched a teacher, like beat him pretty bad. That's a, that's an awful story, man. But you see the parents are getting so fed up with what's happening in these schools, they're snapping. And we had, we had Bannon on the show and he said, come August 15th, you, when these parents figure out what they're doing to their kids, they're going to go nuts. Seeing these parents, you know, come up, I'm kind of like, aside from the, I don't like the violence, but the parents going out and protesting and saying no to these schools, the, the, the push for homeschooling or for pods, school pods, where like local, like the, the kids in the neighborhood will all go with one tutor or whatever mm-hmm. get taught. Uh, that's optimistic because maybe maybe we get hobbled and maybe China does make a big move and becomes the, 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 the economy of the world, the super economy uh, in 2028 or whatever. There's real risks that we're going to lose out if China falls to, to, to mainland China, if Taiwan falls to China and uh, what that means for the United States in terms of our resources, our access. But I do think there's always a, a light, there's always a, you know an open window and a door is shut. That we're going to start seeing people start waking up to this. The hard times will create strong men, and then there there will be some kind of resurgence. That'd be if, if Taiwan were to fall to China. That would actually be if China were to fall to the CCP, because Taiwan right. is China. Exactly. The Republic of China is China. That's the right. CCP's co-opted. And West Taiwan is you know yeah. being has been taken yeah. over by communists. So. That's true. Yeah. So if the Republic of China can take back West Taiwan. It was funny. I, I posted that meme you ever see it, West Taiwan, and all of mainland China just says West Taiwan. <laughs> and boy, do people get mad. <laughs> they don't like that one. All the Chinese bots. Mm-hmm. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash Timcast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you want exclusive members-only content, segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.